Thank you so much for being on Vroom Vroom Veer and welcome to the show. How's it going? Jeff Smith, thank you so much for having me as a guest. I appreciate it. It's going great. Cool. So uh, let's talk a little bit briefly about soundretirementplanning.com. What's, uh, what are you most excited about in your business today? You know what I'm most excited about is I had the opportunity. I've been developing some software, software as a service for the last year and a half. It's called retirementbudgetcalculator.com. Yeah, check that out. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so for people getting ready to retire, the most important number they need to know if they're going to work with an advisor is really how much they spend. And I found that there weren't any really great tools out there, so I invented the Retirement Budget Calculator to help people have a better spending plan as they're getting ready to retire. So I'm really excited about that, but we have thousands of people listening to the pod, my podcast uh, every week. We've got um, my book, made it to a number one bestseller on Amazon. I mean, I've just got all kinds of great things. We, we work and serve with amazing people um, all over the country. And so a lot of, a lot of really great things happening uh, from a business standpoint. Yeah. You know, I checked out your retirement calendar and it looks very cool. I didn't buy it yet, but I might because I think what um, yours offers is a lot different than a lot of the free ones out there because the oh, free so ones. Yeah. I mean, the free ones kind of like leave out all the good stuff. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, there is nothing that's free. I mean, you yeah, know, you're right. I, we thought but, about making ours an ad based model, but yeah. in order to do that, you got to harvest a lot of people, uh, data from people. And what we wanted to do was create a tool that protected people's privacy, yeah. let them pay a fee for it, but then they don't right. have to see a bunch of ads as a result. So you, you pay one way or the other. Sure. We just, I'm just big into protecting people's privacy. And like let that. me tell you, if, before you sign up for the, um, calculator, we have a, a special coupon code right now. Oh, you cool. Where you get 50 percent off, just oh, nice. use the coupon code podcast. It's a one time fee right now. It's only twenty. Uh, it's normally fifty four dollars, but you'll get it for twenty seven dollars, and it's not a subscription cost. So you know this isn't oh, something that's going to. That's at that's least better. at least not yet. We are down we are the road probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're going to be switching to that. But people that sign up under the old uh, one time fee, they're not going to. They're going to oh, get, grand get grandfathered, grandfathered in. in. Ooh, yeah. so do it now. Do it 27 now. Seven bucks, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm and, I'm and, doing it now. I'm going to do that now. I'm going. <laughs> it's good. Yes, that's. That's cool because that's what like I was like, well, let me talk to this guy first and see if there's an offer first. <laughs> well, I'm glad I, you waited. I, yeah. And, and I hope you take PayPal because that's where, I, I, you know, that's not required because 27 bucks is 27 bucks. But no, you know, we use Stripe for processing oh, right, right. credit cards, but it's, um, you know, we also have a guarantee on there. It says for 30 days, if you're not happy oh, nice. with it, let us know. We'll give you your money back. Oh, that's and perfect. We had like eight an eight hundred percent increase already uh, in people signing up just this month. So I, yeah, I'm really excited about that because it's a way for, especially for people that are never going to hire a financial advisor, but they're trying they're do it yourselfers. They want to have a better plan. Right. Uh, the calculator is really exciting, and the community that's really I think most excited about it are the people that are in that fire community, fi uh, right. financially independent, retired early. These right. are you know, people that have, I, uh, they're smart, they're educated. deeply aware of the fire community. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. these guys are saying, look, we don't need to pay a lot of fees to somebody. We just need the tools to help us do a better job. Right. And so people that like to follow somebody like Mr. Money Mustache, you know, yeah. the reason he was love able him. to retire so early isn't, be he only saved a little bit more than a million dollars. He didn't really save that much money, but right. he's, he's fanatical about his Keeping spending. His spending down. Right. Yeah, he rides a bike everywhere. I know. Of driving He's got cars, a so. – he is why I bought a Nissan Leaf. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> and I love it. Let me tell you, um, if you haven't taken the plunge into the electric car, if your commute is under 30 miles one way, you can do it. I'll say that. You can, you can, I... you can get a cheap Nissan Leaf used and use it as your commute car. I have thought about that several times. I drive a Subaru myself. I love yeah. Subarus, but I'm on my third Subaru. But Subaru's I was great. out hiking the other day, and there were these guys that had these um, – it's like an electronic unicycle, uh, like oh, a one wheel. You, oh, wow. Have, have you seen these things? No. Oh, man. It's like a wheel. You stand on a pedal on either side of it, and it's got a gyro in there. So oh, it's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. Okay, segways, you know? Okay. And they, the guy was telling me that you can go about 18 miles on a charge, and it goes 35 miles per hour. And my office is 13 miles from my house. I was thinking, man, I could just get one of those, put a big flag on the back of it, and get a helmet with like little spikes coming off the top yeah. and just cruise to work on one you of those. Could. That might be good. You could. You're not going to, but you could. Uh, no, I, I mean, my wife, she's always teased me for being a, a dork and a nerd anyways, but that might just be pushing it too far. So I used to ride my bike to work 
when I worked in LA and it was like 11 miles one way. But let me tell you, it's like taking your life in your own hands. It's fine. So you have to figure it out. You can't go on the main streets. You have to go through the neighborhoods. Elsewise, you'll get killed. (laughs) (laughs) So you would have to do the same thing. You can go on uh, Google Maps because I did it. And you can actually click on bike, right? There's a route routing for a bike on Google Maps. And it'll tell you the safe route to use for a bicycle. And it'll take you off of all the main drags. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I'm on the show. I learned something new All, just now. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. <clears throat> so these guys, so these guys that were on these electronic one wheels, they yeah. were out riding the mountain bike trails, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! Uh, that's that's kind of cool. So, wow. anyways, life life is changing, man. It's getting better and better all the time. That's neat. So these things are like all terrain. <laughs> yeah, they had knobby tires on. I've been thinking about buying a motorcycle, like a little yeah. uh, dual sport. But after I saw these guys, I'm like, no, I'm going to get one of those. And wow, I'm going to have yeah. to check that out. That's neat. Or yeah. you can just put a little motor on a bicycle. Yeah, well, my neighbors, they're 70-something. Yeah. They, they, that's what they just bought was electronic bicycles yeah. so that they don't pedal right. uphill anymore. Yeah, perfect. Because it, it, I like the kind that do both, you know, that you can pedal when you want to. But then if you get tired, you can, you know, use the little battery motor thingy. The only thing is, man, I think that movie Wally, the cartoon about, you know, the future, I, I'm worried that we're, we're all going to end up... <laughs> Fat and lazy. Floating Being, beds with devices in front right, of our faces. With robots our, feeding our, us. Ex, yes. Our extra big Slurpees. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost We're there. Close. We've got a lot of people that need, uh, you know, couchectomies, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's, let's go back in time and talk about you uh, because you had like this uh, obsession with money. That I want to talk about. So you you mentioned you used to launder money when you were twelve years old. Um, so which, which you know. I'm making up. You know, um, it, you didn't really do that, but you kind of did. You literally did it, not figuratively. So tell us the story about you and your money laundering days back when you were twelve. Man, it makes me so nervous when you say that because the the regulatory environment that I operate in, we're a registered investment advisory firm, and we so we have this like incredible hurdle for everything we say being compliant. And uh, so I'm when sorry. you, I'm we, sorry, no, regulators, no, it, I'm joking. Okay, <laughs> I know, no, I know, I know. It's it's fun, but it's a true story. So I have always been a bit obsessive with money, even as a kid. Like when I would go and buy magazines at the store, I'd buy Money Magazine, and wow. I remember. I was buying I mad. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of weird. That's still kind of weird. But I, um, I was also uh, I had a lawn mowing business when I, I think I was eleven when I started it, and I had so many of my neighbors that wanted us to help that I couldn't do it all on my own. So then I had to get some of my friends involved, and that was really my first experience with a business. But afterwards people would pay me. You know, it's not like the world we live today where everybody just kind of send money electronically through their phone. People would actually give me these crusty dollar bills right. and I would bring them home and I would put them in the sink and I'd wash them and then I'd blow dry them straight on the counter. And I'll never forget the time I, you know, I brought this perfectly crisp, clean money into the bank, I had blow dried it and made it just as nice as I could. I deposited it, and then a couple of weeks I went la- uh, later, I went back to get my money out of the bank, and she handed me this money that was all crumpled up and gross, and I was like, wait a second, this isn't my money. And so that was the first time I realized <laughs> that they weren't, if, they weren't just holding on to your money, you know? It's just... <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's true. I used to wash my money as a kid. Is don't do that anymore, thankfully. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so did you wash the money that you got back from the bank too? No. Uh, did, you, did you have a little? Oh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, I, no, no I was, OCD was where I was going. You had oh, like one no, of those no. germ phobias or something. No, it wasn't really a germ thing. I just wanted my money to be clean Pretty. and straight. And I, it did okay. continue on into my teenage years. You know, some of the people listening to your show probably don't even remember what a cassette tape is. But when I was no, a teenager. No, my audience should know what a cassette tape is. Cassette I hope and so. And 8-tracks. Well, I'm aiming that way anyway. Well, I don't know much about eight tracks, but my son and daughter have no idea what a cassette tape is, even though I've got a whole closet full of 